Hey guys, so I'm here today to talk about some historical fiction books. So I said in a recent video that I was going to try and read one historical fiction book, then buy one historical fiction book, repeat, 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 repeat. I checked how many I had and I only had one. Now I obviously have more than one historical fiction book because I have like 200 unread books but I mean books that I would class sort of specifically as historical fiction so books that you know don't sort of fall into another category their main focus is that they're historical fiction. I only had one and so I decided to treat myself to a few because they're my favourite books to read in the autumn and winter months. I am a very 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 seasonally focused reader and this is something I've learned more and more about myself over the years of having this channel. And this year in particular I have struggled with the summer in England because it has been glorious for a lot of people perhaps not for me and so I've just been like counting down the days until autumn will roll around and I can actually fully enjoy um, you know atmospheric gothic spooky reads. So I decided to pick up a few I decided to focus on books that were published in 2018 because I thought it would be interesting to, or for you guys, to um, hear about some books that you may not have picked up yet or you know some of them aren't out yet this year so you, you know won't have had the chance to pick up and um, but also just because I've read a lot of the more celebrated historical fiction from previous years and so I thought it would be interesting to sort of have a focus on what's coming out at the moment. So. I have seven to talk about. Apologies if I ramble. I'm in quite a rambly mood today. So I'm going to crack on with the books. So the first one is The Corset by Laura Purcell. Now you're probably going to recognise her name because a couple of years ago she had a book called The Silent Companions that came out which I actually hauled on this channel and I haven't read yet. So that was the one historical fiction book I owned and hadn't read and so the publisher contacted me and asked if I would like a copy of this and I initially was going to say no because I felt bad that I hadn't read the first one um, but then I read the blurb on this one and, and couldn't say no effectively so um, I now have both of them to read so let's hope I enjoy her as an author and um, I know lots of people really enjoyed her debut so I, I you know hopeful that I will too. So this book sounds a little bit reminiscent of Affinity by Sarah Waters the reason I say that is because this is about a sort of wealthy middle class lady who starts to visit a working class girl who has been accused of murder and um, so she starts to visit her in prison and um, a story unfolds from there. Now this young working class girl is slash was a seamstress um, and this is somehow tied to her crime. I know her first book I think had supernatural elements involved, I don't know if this one does too. Um, but Affinity by Sarah Waters is also focused on a working class girl accused of a crime that may have supernatural elements um, with a middle class lady going to visit her in prison um, and you know the relationship that develops between them. So um, I'm interested to see how you know these two books having the bare bones of a matching plot um, how differently this one does it um, and also I just find books that have um, prison settings really interesting so hopefully I'm going to really enjoy this one. So when I was hunting around for um, historical fiction novels that were released this year one I stumbled across was House of Glass by Susan Fletcher and I really really like the sound of it so I added it to my list of books to pick up and then two days later this wonderful proof arrived in the post so um, I was really excited. I always get Johnny to send me a photo of any books that arrive in the post um, that I didn't you know request or buy myself so I can see what they are because I'm impatient and um, when I got the photo of this at work I was really pleased because yeah like I say two days late earlier I'd, um, I'd only just heard of it and was very happy to be sent a copy from Virago. So I haven't read any of this author's previous books but if I enjoy this one I think she has quite a few books on her backlist so that's always exciting. This one sounds great, it's a bit odd because it's coming out in November so it's not actually out yet, but will be very soon but I think predominantly it's set in the summer um, so, so November seems like an odd choice publishing wise but I think it has some spooky elements so perhaps that's why. Um, so this is quite unique from the others in the respect that um, some of the others don't mention the time of year they're set um, but this one specifically mentions that it's set in summer. So this is set in 1914 um, and a young woman Clara Waterfield, no so many of the protagonists in these books have really great names so I'll, I'll mention a few more in a bit. 
So she's summoned to a large stone house in Gloucestershire and she is tasked with filling up a glass house with exotic plants from Kew Gardens. But when she arrives, she feels like there's some rather unsettling um, mysteries about this house. And even with the, you know, heat wave of this summer, um, she feels a chill undercurrent in this house um, and some mysteries. So I have no idea if this is supernatural, um, if this is to do with dark family secrets, not sure. Um, but I think it sounds really interesting and I'm really looking forward to picking this one up. So the next one, I heard about this author's previous book a couple of years ago, that was called The Unseeing. Um, but this one's called The Story Keeper and the author is Anna Mazzola. So I meant to pick The Unseeing up and never got round to it. So if I enjoy this, again, I can go back and read her previous book. I don't know if she has any more, I'm sure about that. This sounds great. So this is set, when is it set? In 1857. And it's about a character called Audrey Hart who goes to the Isle of Skye to collect folk and fairy tales from a local community. When she arrives, a young girl's body is washed up on the shore. Um, and I think she starts to um, do a bit of research into other incidences, incidents, <laughs> incidents um, that are similar and uncover some things. And I think some of it may have more of a connection to our protagonist than at first we realise. Uh, so this sounds like it could be a bit spooky, really looking forward to this. I'm actually going on holiday to mainland Scotland in November, so I'm definitely going to take this one with me because I think it'll be a perfect read for that break. So there's that one. So the next book has a very beautiful cover and that is Call of the Curly by Elizabeth Brooks. Now this book doesn't specify on the back where it's set, but I feel like it could be set very close to where I'm from. So I, I was born and grew up in Suffolk and now live in Norfolk um, and this is set on Fenland um, near a vast marsh so it sounds very much like it could be set in East Anglia um, but I will tell you more once I've read this book. So this is quite um, unique in this hall but not in historical fiction in general and then it has two timelines um, we have a lady in her I believe her 80s who wakes up one morning to step out of her house and finds this sort of ominous um, omen on her doorstep warning her of a secret she kept, a mistake she made many many years ago. Um, and this throws her back to her past when she was 10 years old and as an orphan sent to live on a house in the marshes. And she witnessed a, a plane crashing, this is set in 1939, so she witnesses um, a fighter plane crashing into the Fenland and um, what she decides to do at that point um, she regrets for the rest of her life and this is sort of following that. Um, so I think this sounds really interesting. Um, I'm intrigued by the fact that we have this um, older narrator and also um, a young child and yeah, could really enjoy this one especially because of the, um, the location. So there's that one. And then one that I know is set in Suffolk because I heard this one discussed on a podcast. Can't remember which one now, I'm really sorry. Um, but I heard it discussed on a podcast and I've never heard of the author or the book before. Um, and I immediately went and ordered myself a copy because it sounded really intriguing. And that is The Great Level by Stella Tilliard. So um, this is quite a um, crazy cover. And then it's like this on the back. So this is set in 1649, so a bit earlier than the rest. And this is about a Dutchman who is sent over to East Anglia to um, level the fens. So uh, if you don't know much about East Anglia, we have um, a vast area of waterways, which we call the Broads. And um, in my limited knowledge, um, the Broads were created because we dug for, for peat and then we filled um, those vast holes with water. And now they're abundant with wildlife and we have loads of nature reserves um, and protected um, species in those waterways um, and I think this book is focused on um, the very very early time when we um, you know completely change what this area looked like um, so I'm intrigued to hear about um, what it looked like before it was altered because um, obviously I've only ever known it in its altered state and um, other than that I think this novel may have, it says, The Great Level is a dramatic and elemental story about two people whose differences draw them together, together and then drive them apart. So yeah, this one could have a bit of a romance at the centre. I probably wouldn't have picked this book up if it wasn't set in Suffolk because it has a male protagonist and it's just not something I love. 
gonna be honest but um, when it arrived I read the first few pages it's very different to the others um, it sounds a lot more or the main character sounds a lot more um, intellectual than I would choose to read in historical fiction but it really drew me in so this one could be a winner so there's that one so the last two are the ones I'm most excited about that's why I saved them till the end and I'm excited about them for very different reasons. So the first one, I hadn't heard of the author or the book before I stumbled across this while doing some searching online. And that is All Among the Barley by Melissa Harrison. So this came out early this year, I think perhaps in the spring. And I've not really heard anyone talk about it. So um, I was a bit surprised that it had come out this year because um, usually I feel like with the amount of booktube I watch, I tend to hear about most new releases, but this one has somehow slipped me by. Um, and it sounds amazing, so I'm so happy I stumbled across it. So, I think this author has a few previous books out, some fiction, some non-fiction. She's quite young, um, and after I purchased this, I heard her on a podcast as well, um, and she mentioned that she moved to Suffolk to write this book and then never left because she loved it so much. So, um, the main reason I'm really excited about this book is nothing to do with the actual plot, it's to do with the fact that when this author writes non-fiction she writes nature writing and four of the authors on the back who are saying how amazing this book are are Helen MacDonald, John McGregor, Robert McFarlane and Evie Wilde and all of those authors are very well known for being fantastic nature writers and their books are really infused with a sense of place um, so the fact that they're all saying how amazing this is is so exciting. So what is it about? Well it's set in the autumn of 1933 and our main character is called Edie Mather which again I think is a great name and she is sent from London to Suffolk to document fading rural traditions and beliefs and then she meets an older woman and something happens from there. It says as harvest time approaches and pressures mount on the entire community Edie must find a way to trust her instincts and save herself from disaster. I've read the first few pages of this, they are glorious, so I'm very very excited about this one. So the last book I want to talk about, I don't have a copy of yet, but I'm hoping to um, get it on pre-order so it arrives on the release date, which I believe is mid-November. And that book is Five Days of Fog by Anna Freeman. Here is a picture of the cover. So I loved Anna Freeman's debut novel, which came out a few years ago, and that was The Fair Fight. I thought it was glorious. So you hear lots of historical fiction books compared to Sarah Waters in writing style and this was one that had that written on the cover and it always concerns me because she is in my mind our greatest contemporary historical fiction writer and so it's it's you know everyone wants to be compared to her and it's the only she is the only author I've read who I can say if you like Sarah Waters then you will definitely like Anna Freeman because they're very different writers but the the tone, the voice they, they write in is similar um, and so I think if you enjoy one you will enjoy the other. Um, so The Fair Fight was an excellent book um, and Five Days of Fog sounds just as excellent. What I love about her books is they both have a real focus on a woman's place in society. So this next one it sounds so so good, I'm so excited. So this is set in London in 1952 and Ruby Palmer waits to be released from prison and at home her daughter Florrie also waits knowing that as soon as her mother returns she will have to make a choice between staying or leaving and both of these um, feel like the wrong choice. So her mother and her um, um, close family and friends are part of a violent girl gang in London and she is trying to decide whether it says here this is so amazing but what will she do if she's too crooked to go straight and too good to go bad um so this book is set across five days when the great smog falls over london and there's a deep fog and she's trying to decide whether to run away with the man she loves and have a traditional life and marry him or to stay with this um girl gang that she's been raised with um it sounds great her books are phenomenal you know i say this having um read one but um I hope this will be a book of the year and I'm um, just so excited for it as I am for all of these books. So let me know down below if you have any of these on your list to read or if you've added them since you've heard me talk about them in this video and also feel free to recommend me other historical fiction books that share in these themes that you think I would enjoy because I can never have too many historical fiction 
recommendations. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!